In our previous video, we have mentioned about columns can fail in tensions or in compressions. There is a state of balance where the tensions and compressions failure happens at the same time, which happens at the positions here where you have N balance and the M balance. In these slides, we're going to demonstrate how we obtain the N balance based on the first principles of the columns. The stress strain relationship of the column sections as well as the formulas to determine the strength in the steels has already been discussed in the previous video. Taking the columns with tensions as a reference, we are looking at the tensile steel strain. This formula of tensile steel strain is actually derived from the strain profile here for the reinforcement bar undergoing tensions. We have also mentioned that at the balance conditions, the strength in the tension steel will be equal to the yield strength of the steel bar. Taking this as the governing criteria for the formulas here, substituting the epsilon y with epsilon s. Rearrange the equations, you get this. For the steel grade 500, the yield strength will be equal to 0.00217. Substitute this into the equation here. You will obtain the neutral axis for the balance conditions, which is equal to 0.617D. Now we want to determine the axial force when the section is under balance conditions. This is obtained by referring to the stress plot diagram here. The axial force of the columns will be equal to the resultants of all the forces within the columns. This includes the FCC, the compressive force of the column itself, FSC, the compressive force due to the compression steel bar, and also FS, the tensile force of the steel in tensions. The FCC is obtained by multiplying this 0.567 FCK with the height of the stress plot, which is 0.X balance. The X balance is determined from here and multiply with the width of the sections. That gives you these equations. The compressive force due to the compression steel is determined by the stress in the compression steel multiply the area of the compressive steel. The stress in the compressive steel is determined by multiplying its strength with the modulus of elasticity. The strength here can be obtained from the formula here. As for the tensile force in the steel, it is determined by the design U strength of the steel multiply the areas of the steel. Substituting the relevant value, you will be able to obtain the axial force under the balance conditions. By referring to the stress plot diagram here, you will be able to determine the balance moment also. The moment here is calculated on the basis of the centroid of the column sections, which is H per 2. To determine the moment here, you will need to multiply the FCC with a lever arm to the centroid of the column sections. The formulas of FCC is obtained here and the lever arm will be H per 2 minus 
centroid of the stress block diagram for the compressions which is half of the 0 0.x x balance plus the force due to compressions due to the lever arm to the centroid of the columns the force in the compression steel is calculated here and its lever arm to the centroid of the columns is determined by H per 2 minus D prime minus the force due to the tension steel times the lever arm from the tension steel to the centroid of the column sections the force in the tension steel is calculated here and its lever arm is determined by minusing the D with the H per 2. It is noted that the compression stress in the compression steel here should be less than 0.F7 FYK which is the design yield strength of the steel. Although it is calculated from the strength multiplied the modulus of elasticity, the value should not exceed 0.87 FYK. Substituting the relevant value into the formula, you are able to obtain the moments of the balance section. With the Asian looks of the balance sections obtained, if the design look is greater than N balance, compression failure is likely to occur. Otherwise, tensile failure is likely to occur.